Hello, welcome to this series of tutorials on the use of Petri nets for modeling discrete event systems. In this series, we are especially interested in learning about a software called CPN Tools for the modeling of discrete event systems. But before we go and learn about that software, let's look at the definition of a discrete event system. We start with the definition of a system. A system is defined as a set of interacting components that act together to perform a function not possible with any one of the individual components. Modeling or abstraction is a relationship between two systems such that one system, that is the model, abstracts some features of another system while preserving certain desirable properties. And why do we do that? The purpose of modeling is to replace a more complicated system by a system that is simpler and easier to handle something that we can analyze uh, that can help us answer certain questions. So we may have a real world system that we may like to analyze. The model of this system may be a set of equations or a simulation model, a program in a computer. A system developer or a system analyst may be interested in looking at this artifact, this model, may have certain questions that this model may answer or address. Since we are interested in primarily dynamic systems, discrete even dynamic systems, let's look at the classification of dynamic systems. There are five different dimensions uh, on which uh, dynamic systems can be classified into several classes of systems. Uh, a dynamic system is characterized by a change in its states with time. So we start with the driving type. The system's change may be time-driven or event-driven and we may have systems where the change may be due to both time and events and we call them fully driven systems. The state of these systems may be represented by a collection of variables and the values that these variables can take may be finitely many, may be discrete, infinitely many, continuous, or we may have a combination of variables where some of them take continuous values and some of them are discrete. They may be finite or infinite. And therefore we have this notion of hybrid uh, systems. The variables or the relationships between these variables may be deterministic or stochastic. Since we have this notion of change with the passage of time, we consider this time variable to be a, a, a special variable. And this variable, again, may be continuous or discrete. When we talk about discrete event systems, the class of systems that we uh, represent by this term are event driven. The state space uh, is discrete. The number of states may be finitely many or infinite. The relationship between these variables may be deterministic or stochastic. And again, the notion of time for these systems uh, may be continuous or discrete. So let's summarize uh, the definition of our discrete event systems. They are called discrete because the states of the system are described by a discrete set. You can call one uh, state S1 or state number one, then another state is state number two, and then another state is state number three. So you can map the set of states for these systems to the set of integers, if you will. Uh, this set of states may be finite, or infinite, so the states that the system may be in at one particular point in time uh, may be finitely many or infinitely many. The notion of event uh, is a primitive concept, a specific action taken or a spontaneous occurrence dictated by nature. So they are event-driven systems and an event is described as a primitive concept. An event, by definition, occurs instantaneously. The occurrence of an event may or may not change the state of a system. But whenever there is a change 
in this state of a discrete event system it will be because of an event occurring and here we have a definition of an event the problem with discrete event systems is that the developed systems theory um, all the the good stuff about differential equations and difference equations that we have developed for time driven system uh, do not apply to this class of systems we do have lots of discrete event systems out there they are complex it's important that we are able to model test and debug either the entire system or parts of that system uh, these systems may be legacy systems they are out there and we may be interested in improving their performance or we may be building a new uh, discrete event systems and therefore we may be interested in having a model of that system prior to its implementation in the absence of a mathematical uh, formalism like differential equations and difference equations that we have for time-driven systems uh, the possible approaches we are left with are as follows either we build a prototype of such a system or we build some kind of a model some kind of a an abstract representation that we can analyze for uh, the kind of questions or the analyses that we may like to uh, address or perform I hope that we are all convinced on why we are interested uh, in modeling or why is it that modeling is needed it gives us insight into the design and operation of a system it results in a more com complete design and as in the process of doing the analysis the models at times reveal errors and ambiguities in the design phase and we fix those errors before we implement our designs in a nutshell a model allows a designer or an analyst to inspect it in a way that facilitates reasoning about the actual system we are analyzing or we are about to build next we will uh, look at a real world system and then we'll try to describe it as a discrete event system um, and we'll see as to uh, how we can construct a small model of that real world system so what we have over here is a system with two robotic arms A and B and we have two stacks of wafers or some objects that these arms uh, carry and then move from one place to the other robot A picks a wafer and then brings it closer to uh, the arm B and then these two robots exchange the, the, the wafer and then the robot B goes and deposits that wafer on a separate stack so let's look at um, the different states of this system so what we have over here is a state one where both arms A and B are without wafers next robot arm A picks a wafer so you see this transition from one state to another state the initial state was state one the second state is state two and on the transition on the arrow that connects state one to state two we have put this uh, event which says robot A picks a wafer the robot moves and goes closer to the other robot and you see that in this abstraction we do not model this as a new state so this is just an abstraction that we are using uh, in the analysis of the system if this movement is important then you should uh, come up with a different model that also looks at this this uh, robot movement from that stack to uh, the close to arm B now in this state 2 the event which is robots exchange wafer takes place resulting in a new state and the new state is now can be characterized as one where arm A is without wafer and arm B is with a wafer 
then the two arms again move and you see that we do not have a new state for for this uh, movement again this is our abstraction that we have used to come up with the model now in this state 3 we see that this robot arm B is close to the second stack it deposits that stack and that is something that we have modeled as an event which says robot B deposits wafer and now system is back to its initial state 1 now again if you look at this small system there are many things that we have ignored for example the two stacks uh, have different number of uh, wafers when we started this process of picking a wafer giving it to robot B and then depositing but we are not modeling that as one of the or we are not capturing that uh, state as part of our state variables so again this is just one way of looking at a system uh, the example illustrates as to how different features can be ignored or different aspects can be ignored while doing a model uh, if those things are important for the analysis questions uh, we should uh, add those features uh, in our model if they are not we can ignore them as was illustrated in this example so what you have on the left hand side is a state transition diagram it's a state machine that shows the state space which has three states finitely many discrete states state one state two state three and we see we show uh, transitions between them the change from one state to the other and all those changes uh, were results of some events taking place uh, in the next uh, lecture we will look at the same example and and will build a PetriNet model of the same uh, uh, system uh, we hope that we see you again in that lecture